Alabama and Georgia are 1A and 1B in the SEC, but that third spot could be up for grabs. Ole Miss might be that team. Lane Kiffin's Rebels coming off a 10-win season that ended in the Sugar Bowl, and in the conference they were 6-2. and two. They and Alabama, the only teams in the SEC West to finish with a winning record, are Dennis Dodd with the Lane Train. Lane Kiffin will talk a little football later, but you signed a mustard bottle today. I think we know the significance of that, but were you expecting that? <laughs> I was not, and that was the first thing to happen to me today. So um, it was kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, four years since the transfer portal started, one-time transfer is less than a year old. You're the self-described king of the transfer portal. What have you learned about it over time that's allowed you to capitalize on it? I'm not really self-described. I tweeted something that someone sent to me and gave me the idea of the Portal King, so I don't know that I would say self-described. Um, you know, and I didn't even think when you said four years ago, because it was like that really wasn't it, because you still had the penalty. So it didn't, that didn't change the landscape of college football. NIL, to me, came basically the same time as the Portal, of, the one-time Portal part of changing the landscape of college football. And, or professional sports that don't have the calendar figured out or a cap. Do you expect a change in that calendar where it becomes more, you know, there's more windows, there's more structure to it? Well, they've started that way and got it better, but I'm, I think it's still going to have more, going to be a more productive system for everybody involved. What was the best part of last year for you? <sighs> I really enjoy, and this happened at FAU, I really enjoy if a program's not had success for a little bit so that your players, even if their seniors really haven't won. And so to have that happen, um, you know, in best regular season in school history and, you know, undefeated home winning season and all that, it's just really cool for the players and fans. Is there any significant, Charlie Weiss Jr., it was obviously you have a relationship with him, the new OC. Is there any significance to him this being his first Power Five job? He's called plays before. I don't know. I don't worry about that as much. Um, maybe I'm wrong. I just I was young. I've seen other young coaches and what level you're at and stuff. You know, um, I think if you can do it, you can do it. It's kind of like recruiting too. Great recruiters. They say, well, they can't come recruit this area, that area. I'd rather have a great recruiter. Regardless of area, just like, you know, a great offensive line. What's the relationship there with Jackson Dart? Because USC guy obviously coming in, new offensive coordinator. You've got really at least three big transfers coming in. But I'll just ask about Jackson first. Well, he's in a quarterback battle. I think the yeah. assumption people made was he was going to be the quarterback, and that's not the case. And um, both guys had good, good springs, and we're excited about the fall coming up and getting to camp. Uh, so they can really compete really hard and make each other better. Uh, and Zach Evans from TCU. Yeah, very dynamic running back that's had explosive plays on the you know big time level, and um, we're excited about him. Uh, and finally, uh, Jalen Robinson. Um, again, uh, explosive player, dynamic. Uh, you know, now we got him really late because um, he wasn't with us for the spring, so we got a lot of work to do to get everything going there. How have you changed as a coach, if anything? Because I, I don't see it. You're still the same guy. You're still the same coach. I just think you do things longer. You get experience. And so I'd like to think I don't make some of the same mistakes that I made before. Just they come with experience. I mean, on Feinbaum and there's the magazine. I couldn't even told you this. Like, I've been a head coach college football for 10 years. It's been the 11th year. And that I wouldn't have even guessed that. Now, does it seem 10 years? I mean, you look like you w were 10 years ago. I don't know about that, but um, sometimes it, that's one of those that sometimes it seems like 20 years, sometimes it seems like two. All right. You've coached so many places. What is it about it that's special at Oxford and Ole Miss to walk down a street at an SEC school like that and then have a generational season? Like I said, just so exciting for the fans that were just starving for it. Um, you know, we're so excited, and then a couple Egg Bowl wins, and so it's just been really cool. Three Egg Bowl wins. That's big. Well, two. Yeah. Two. Uh, reaction real quick to USC. 
going to uh, the Big Ten. It just doesn't feel right, doesn't sound right. Maybe that's just from being there for so long. Um, just I, I don't know why that's good except for um, obviously money. Great. Thanks, Lane. All right, thank you. Looking at the schedule, the non-conference is weak. And so is really the whole first half of that schedule. The first two SEC games. Kentucky, good, a good team, but at Vanderbilt, uh, a game that Ole Miss is expected to win, and I think two games that Ole Miss would be expected to win. Then it gets real tough come mid-October. Auburn, LSU, A&M, Bama, Arkansas, and Mississippi State to finish things out. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.